years back, magazines were writing off the custom surfboard. Everything was going to be made in China or Thailand. You know, it's like the custom surfboard's dead. We were one of the few shops still doing a lot of color work, resin tints, um, hard surfboards to do, bonzers, glass on fins, just trick stuff that was commonplace up until a few years before that time. If anything, we pushed the custom craftsmanship trade thing and uh, JP through his blog, he said, and Moonlight has some small contribution to the kind of a renaissance of surfboard building. Early 70s, I went down and worked for Ed Wright Sunset Surfboards downtown Encinitas. And that's where we started Moonlight. My good friend, the late Bill Castor, I'd been working a bit with him, and he'd offered me a full-time job when he heard Eddie was going to close down. He, he talked me into it. He goes, you know, you, you have such a good crew at Sunset, you can't break that up. I think you ought to go ahead and start a glass shop, which was basically talking me into competing with him. I went for it, and myself, Gary Stuber, Mark Donnellan, and Kenny Mann, we started the shop together. And all those guys are still working here, you know, 35 years later. I've done like laminating all everything in the surfboard thing, but I've, what I like is is color work, pin striping, and and airbrushing. That kind of is, was a good thing because I, I had to run the business too, and it's kind of the, one of the few things you can drop and answer the phone. Um, if you're laminating, you can't stop. So uh, I kind of got stuck with that. And then my wife Sally came on, and she's basically ran the office and kept this place together, kept us from uh, going broke for all this time because uh, my forte is making surfboards, not uh, financing them. <laughs> I was always, you know, doing art on surfboards from the 60s, drawing on them and everything, and it just kind of progressed. Started pinstriping them and painting them up. Worked beside Gary Brumman, who was just was the best pinstriper ever at Surfboards Hawaii, and uh, worked alongside John Breeden, the guy who pioneered most of the airbrush techniques at Rainbow Surfboards. Mike Henson, learn color theory, airbrushing from him, you know, just pick up a little bit here and there. Once you learn how to do it, it's just a matter of just trying to get better. Surfboard factories, you know, companies are almost, you know, like a rock and roll band. You, you need all the elements to work together to make it right. Our crews work together really well. You know, everybody does their own thing, but it all meshes. We butt heads, but uh, in the end, we end up making a good surfboard. And... I mean, it's not all like groovy, artsy, fartsy stuff. I mean, it's a dirty job, and it's hard job, and it's and it's uh, you got to be there every day. I mean, you don't have to be the best guy, but if you're there and people can count on you, you know, it's going to get you a long way. Um, you got to get stuff done. You're only as good as your last board, your last delivery. It's probably one of the secrets in life is find something you, you enjoy because you're going to have to be doing something. <laughs> <laughs>